our first live streaming from the Hop Wayne Garden. My name is Rosa Aldrich and I'm from the United States. And my name is Tapa Sanjay and I'm from Nepal. So we want to hear from where you guys are from. Where are you watching from? So go ahead and put it in the comments and let us know. Also, at any time, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to send them there too. And we'll do our best to answer them for you. Also, the weather is so nice today, but the wind is also very strong. So if you can't hear us, please let us know as well, okay? Great. Please don't forget to put a comment of your name or the country where are you from. Uh, we have... Uh... Ibrahim from Malaysia here. Thank you for watching. You for watching. And uh, Jennifer from India. Thank you for watching. Uh, we have um, I don't know how to read your name. Sorry, Suhami. Thank you for watching. Hello, many hello from Malaysia. Yeah, we have almost the same time, I guess. <laughs> yeah, many people in other places are sleeping, I guess from Malaysia, from Hong Kong, Soki, thank you, thank you for watching from Hong Kong, okay? Okay, so before we get started, we're going to tell you a little bit about Hakuen. So first, Hakuen is a wedding and MICE facility. So MICE stands for meetings, incentive tours, conferences, and events. But probably what we're most known for is our 200 year old Japanese garden. And if you look around, it's so big. It's actually 300 or 33,000 meters square. It's so big. And it's so crazy that this garden is located in the city center of Tokyo. Isn't that wonderful? That's amazing. So Sorry. it's. Oh, <laughs> go ahead. We <laughs> love so good and like. So it's sky so clear. Mm -hmm. It's just windy, but hope you guys will enjoy our live video today. So, talking more about Hapoin's Garden. So, Hapoin's Garden was made around 300 years ago. And Kuhurak Sanusuke, one of the founder of Hapoin, he started making the Hapoin Garden. So, he was the one of the owner of Hapoin and also a well known businessman from Meiji era. And he was also the founder of Pistach Company. So, he transferred many historic relics from all over Japan and he brought that to our Hapoen Garden and then Hapoen Garden was made from here. But unfortunately, we are not able to show you each and everything today because our today's main topic is Kaozu Sakura and bonsai. Mm -hmm. But on our next video, we will definitely show you those items. And then, talking about Hapoen once again, so can you please tell our audience the actual meaning of Hapoen? Sure, so Hapoen actually means beautiful from all sides or angles. So that means no matter where you are in Hapuen, if you have a view of the garden, you will definitely enjoy the view. It is truly a wonderful place here. And also, actually, so one thing too, in the Hapuen garden, we actually host events here several times throughout the year. Yeah. So for example, one of our most popular is our red light up illumination in the fall or autumn. And also sometimes in the spring, we also have our sakura trees lit up at night. So hopefully you guys in the future can see those as well. So before we move on, we're going to go over and look at our bonsai alley. But I have a question for you guys. How long or how old do you think bonsai cultivation is? How many years? ago did bonsai cultivation start? Let us know in the comments, okay? So from now we are going to show you guys our bonsai alley. So if you have any interesting facts that you know about bonsai, please let us know. Please comment in the comment box and we'll talk that later. Thank you all for watching and uh, we'll get some uh, comments saying that the, the voice is not clear. Because uh, it's so windy today, <laughs> we're very sorry. We're very sorry. And next time we're gonna prepare some pin mics. <laughs> okay. Okay, so is it better for closer? Is that better? Is this better if we talk closer? Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. So try to talk talk lou louder. Louder. Okay. louder. <laughs> okay. We're sorry. We'll do our best for yeah. now. Okay. So did anyone know how old bonsai cultivation is? Was there any comments? 
Not yet. At least five years? Five years. <laughs> five years. Okay. That's so young. That's so young. Have you reading the the answer? Yeah. So actually bonsai cultivation began two thousand years ago. Two thousand years ago. Two thousand years ago. Okay. That's a long history actually. But not only that, bonsai comes in different shapes and sizes. So actually, the tiniest bonsai there is can fit on the tip of your finger. Cheek, wow! Guys. Not yeah, the tip. Um, cheek, guys. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Do you guys have any other interesting facts about bonsai? Do you guys know anything? If anyone knows anything about bonsai or you have any question about bonsai, yeah. please yeah. feel free to leave a comment down yeah. below yeah. and let us know. We're gonna try our best to answer your questions, okay? So, and then talking more about our bonsai. So, our best part of bonsai alley is that the bonsai alley, the display is out in all season, throughout the whole year. Uh -huh. So that our customers can enjoy how our bonsai changes each season. For example, let me show you over here. Okay. Uh -huh. We have some, some uh, audience from yeah. DC and from California. Oh. <laughs> so, among our bonsai, in our bonsai alley, we have some bonsai that actually sprout flowers. So you can have a look over here, so it's going to sprout flowers. Oh, soon? Yeah, it's going can to you sprout guys flowers see? very soon. Okay. And just near to that bonsai, we have our next bonsai, who is actually bearing fruits. So it's in the corner. Himegaki. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a bit difficult okay. to see. So uh, it's a possiman right. and over it's there, yeah. Yeah. It's a little <laughs> little baby persimmon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's the best part of our bonsai alley. So you can enjoy your bonsai, our bonsai alley in each and every season. And mm -hmm. the beauty of the bonsai changes every time. And also one thing, we have a light up illumination mm -hmm. of bonsai mm -hmm. in different seasons. For example, in our autumn we have red light display. And in our winter we have blue light display. So you can enjoy our bonsai in daytime as well as in nighttime. And also in the Hopkwin bonsai collection we actually have around 31 different types of bonsai. Primarily they're pine but we also have a Chinese crab apple tree or hime bingo in Japanese or our persimmon tree which we just showed you now. Uh -huh. But not only are the bonsai trees in the Hopkwin garden well, many different kinds, but we also have several different ages. So, how old do you think our oldest bonsai is? Put your comments in the... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Waiting for your answers. So the questions again, maybe? <laughs> yeah. So, the questions oh. again, maybe? Oh, the question? Okay, so, okay. the question is, how old is our oldest bonsai? How old is our oldest bonsai? Okay, how old do you think our oldest bonsai is? Yeah. Leave your, you leave your answer <laughs> down below, okay? <laughs> so if bonsai cultivation is 2,000 years old, how old do you think our oldest bonsai is? Uh, we got uh, answers, 200 years. Oh, that's good. Uh, that, that, that that's, good. Yeah, yeah. That was close. Yeah, yeah close. close. <laughs> 1,200 years old. <laughs> uh, one, 100 years. 100 years. 200 yeah, years. Most, most of our bonsai 50. 1000 oh thank you guys for thank you so much for your comments guys. comments yeah so, shall we review the answer yes so actually your guys' answers were so close but our oldest bonsai actually in the hop wing garden is this one it's 525 years old and it's called shimpaku yeah so right here 525 25 okay and so on each of our bonsai we have one of these little plaques so you can see the name of the tree mm. as well as how old it is. Now this is our most well-known Shimpaku, but we also have another one that is 525 yep. years old. So come over here. And so this is Izomatsu. Do you want to talk about this one? Yeah. So this okay. is also our 525 years old bonsai and it's called Ezomatsu. So it was brought from Hokkaido and it is said that before in the past, the name of Hokkaido was called Ezo. So it's called Ezomatsu. Ezomatsu. The matsu from Hokkaido, it's called Ezomatsu. Okay, thank you for explanation. Yeah, so, all right, so let's 
walk over this way a little bit. Okay. And as we're walking, so as you can see, the Hopwine Garden is quite large, as we said before. So this area over here, actually in the springtime, will be all sakura. So here soon, in the next month or so, these will all be pink. <laughs> yeah, not yeah. yet. Not yeah. yet now. Not It'll yet. Pink yeah. and red with our tsuji. Tsuji. Yeah, rhododendron flowers. Rhododendron flowers. Uh -huh. So and oh. I have a question for Rosa. Yes. So, Rosa, did you know that rhododendron is the national flower of Nepal? I didn't know that. So, wait, is there a specific color that is the national flower? So, we have different kind of colors for rhododendron, but in Nepal, red rhododendron is the national flower. Oh. Because in Nepal, we use red color a lot. Oh, because okay. we believe that it's a color of love and happiness. So, as you can, yeah, you can oh, that's see right. that's, my, Okay. This is the Nepal's national flag. Oh, yeah, here's okay, Taba, so... also from Nepal, <laughs> again, yeah. So then, is that, does that mean that the rhododendrons in the Hapuan Garden are your favorite? That's true, yeah. That's true. Rhododendron <laughs> is my favorite flower. And red rhododendron. Red rhododendron. Yeah. <laughs> red, okay. What's so, your favorite? Uh, for me, I prefer... Uh, Oh, what do I... I like the hydrangeas. Uh -huh. So in Japanese, it's ajisai. Ajisai. And they bloom in June, especially uh -huh. during the rainy season. Uh -huh. So our ajisai, especially, are near our waterfront. And they're just so beautiful. So down by our pond... Oh, that's water. Yeah, so we have a pond with uh, 250 koi, koi fish. Oh. And truly during June, that's my favorite time for me personally. Okay. Yeah, so can't wait. Yeah. yeah. So in our next slide, maybe we'll show you guys our pond and we'll talk about our koi fish in detail. Yeah. So now let's actually go check out the Kawazu Zakura. Let's okay, let's go. Home. of sakura trees. So today we're introducing the Kawazu Sakura tree. So this tree is actually the earliest blooming sakura tree in all of Japan. And this type of tree actually came from Shizuoka Prefecture. Now, does anyone know what is really special or well known about the Kawazu Sakura? Does anyone have any ideas? If you have anything, please comment in the comment box. Yeah, we had some comments. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, again, uh, we've I think we've mentioned, but again, uh, here Hapoen is in Tokyo, yes. and uh, in Tokyo around February, the Kawazu Sakura yeah. will be That's blooming true. every year. Yeah. yeah? Okay. So um, yeah, we we got many people watching. Thank you, guys, very much for watching. Okay. And uh, yeah. yeah, we're going to explain more about Kawazu Sakura. So yes. talking more about Kawazu Sakura, as Rosa said earlier. So it's the earliest blooming sakura in Japan. Mm -hmm. So it start, starts blooming from mid-February and it is, in, it is in its full bloom in end of February. So it's the longest sakura that everyone can enjoy. Yeah. So it can last for around one month. Yeah. So it also depends on the weather. Mm -hmm. But if the weather is too good, so and there's no wind, mm -hmm. you can enjoy the Kawazu sakura until early March. Early March, yeah. okay. From mid February to early March. Okay. Just around That's one pretty month. long, yeah. huh? Okay. And also inside Hapuan Garden, we have 80 sakura trees in total. So among 80? Yeah, 80. And among them, we have 17 Kawazu Sakura. Uh -huh. So after Kawazu Sakura, then Yoshino Sakura will bloom. And then after that, Sidare, Zae. So we have four different kinds of sakura that will bloom town by town. Uh -huh. So you can enjoy our sakura in garden uh -huh. for around two or half months. Uh -huh. So please visit our garden. Yeah. And one nice thing also about the Kawazu Sakura, it's most known for the large bright pink flowers. So a lot of the other sakura, they might have a very softer pink, but uh -huh. these ones are super bright. And so on a really nice day like today, the pink really just pops against the sky and it just looks so pretty. So not only that, in Tokyo, well not even in Tokyo, all of Japan. <laughs> yeah. So there's actually a lot of like uh, food, drinks, snacks, where they actually use the sakura flavor. And so actually in Hakuen, we have our own private brand chocolate, which uses sakura flavor. Woo! 
So cute. Our, so this is our private brand Kiki chocolates, and this is our Sakura chocolates. So it's made by using Sakura, the uh -huh. flower of Sakura. Uh -huh. So it's called Yae Sakura, and we have used the flowers of Yae Sakura to make make these chocolates. Okay. Now, when he says the flowers. He doesn't mean we took them off the tree. <laughs> and uh, then, the powder. And well, actually, we turn it into a, like a syrup. Yeah. Okay. Oh, syrup. Yeah. So, and actually, in the in the year when you can actually pick the flowers, there's only technically one or maybe two times in the year that we can actually collect the flowers and make it into the sauce um, in order for us to make these kind of chocolates. Okay. So, honestly. These and any of the other um, kind of drinks or yeah. snacks in Japan is really great. And if you haven't mm -hmm. had a chance, please try something with sakura flavors. And these sakura and chocolates are limited edition. So <laughs> don't miss your chance. If you are in Tokyo, please visit us and buy the sakura chocolates. Yeah. yeah. But also, so we're talking about our Kawazu Sakura today in front of our 13 tiered pagoda. So let's go over here and have a look. Okay. Tapasan, we got many audience from Nepal actually. Hello guys. Yeah, everyone is giving uh, compliment, compliments to you. <laughs> so, this is our 13th year pagoda and it is 200 years old. Okay. In case you can't hear me, I'll come closer. So, okay. This, this 13 tiered pagoda is actually 200 years old and it was actually transferred from Iga in Mie Prefecture um, to the Hopwin Garden at the request of one of the previous owners. Okay? And so each of the tiers actually represents a person's desire that they may have at one time. And it's said actually that the pagoda will collapse if a 14th layer was to ever be added. Isn't that cool? That's amazing. That's amazing. Very cool. <laughs> amazing. More about this pagoda. So if you look further, uh -huh. this pagoda, okay, like something is written over here, right? Uh, so this is a Sanskrit the... character. Okay. Sanskrit character who indicates the direction. So over there it's east. This one is west. West. North. And, okay. And opposite one is south. Uh, okay. So this was used by the travelers as a signpost in the past. So it's really hard to read now, uh -huh. but it was used by the travelers as a signpost in the past. I see. Okay. Thank you. And there we have one more interesting fact about this pagoda. Yes. So, Rosafan, can you please share that with our audience? I can. So actually, our pagoda was said to have uh, withstood the tremors of the great uh, Kanto earthquake yeah. in 1923. Mm -hmm. So something as old as this was able to withstand some of the greatest tremors that we felt, right? right. That's, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that 1922 earthquake was so huge, right? Yes. It was like 7.9 magnitude. Yes. And so many people lost their lives, but yes, unfortunately. our pagoda didn't fall down. Yes. Stood up. Oh, it survived. Yeah, it survived. So, it's truly a lovely relic here in our garden. Yeah. And Actually, we have many more in our garden yeah. too. So, besides this pagoda as well, we have so many small pagodas in our garden mm -hmm. scattered in different places. So, if you have a chance to visit our garden, try to find that and take a picture and don't forget to share it with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. We check our Instagram and Facebook <laughs> all the time. Yeah. So, if you share it with us, we'll hopefully be able to share it on our page. So, be sure to share it with us, okay guys? <laughs> and now, we're going to go this way. So guys, the next we are going to talk about Hanami. So if you have visited Japan or like you are living in Japan, you may know that in the Sakura season, there is a festival in Japan, a celebration called Hanami. So Hanami is actually made by using two Japanese words, Hana and Mi. So Hana means flower and Mi means to see or to look. 
So if you combine these two words together, it's hanami, which means green flower in English. So this is the season for people to enjoy green flowers in Japan. <laughs> Let's go up here a little bit more now. <laughs> so, for Hanami in Japan especially, um, people will go to have a picnic. So, a lot of people actually go to parks and they will go with their friends, their families, and just have a night full of food, drinks, and fun games. How about in Nepal? Do you guys have family culture or anything? So in Nepal, we have flowers that looks like sakura, mm -hmm. but the trees are like less in Japan. In Japan, we have a lot of trees. Okay. And also in Nepal, we don't have like celebration, the special celebration like hanami. Mm -hmm. But people, they go check flowers, enjoy with friends, take photos. Mm -hmm. But we don't like go to under the tree, drink, dance. We don't oh. do that kind of Okay. So enjoyment, but yeah, hanami in Japan is just amazing. Oh yeah. <laughs> so how about the U.S.? Ah, uh, so in the U.S. we don't really have a uh, hanami culture the same as Japan, but we actually have a four-week-long cherry blossom festival in Washington D.C. So wow. all of the Washington D.C. people, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, cultural festival um, is actually held every year. And it's to celebrate the friendship between the United States and Japan, and especially kind of commemorating the moment when Japan gifted the United States uh, around 3,000 cherry trees or sakura trees. Mm -hmm. um, and also, the United States uh, did the same actually in 1915. So, the first trees that Japan gave us was in 1912, mm -hmm. and like a couple years later, in 1915. U.S. gave them uh, another flowering tree called the dogwood. Uh -huh. So, if you ever see dogwoods in Tokyo or around Japan, that's <laughs> where it came. Yeah. And then also, here's another interesting point. <laughs> okay, Rosa is gonna show something to yeah, us. So something that's interesting. In 2012, I actually represented Ohio State. Wow for the Cherry Blossom Festival, for the Centennial Festival, so the 100th anniversary of the Cherry Blossom Festival. So wow. Any of my princesses alumni, <laughs> hello. Wow. Thank you, for joining. <laughs> thank you for yeah. Yeah. So actually, if you've never been to the States or Washington DC for springtime, really, you guys should try uh, the flowers, the sakura there mm -hmm. is so amazing on the Panama River. Like, it's, it's just phenomenal. So, yeah, uh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> so as as Rosa-san said, like, we don't have Hanami festivals in other countries like in Japan. Uh -huh. yeah. So, can you Rosa-san share your experience that you had? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious as well. Like, how, how, <laughs> did you, how did you feel the first time you see uh, Sakura in Japan? Well, when I first came to Japan and saw Sakura, I was just so taken back. I was like, it's so beautiful. Like, I just want this to bloom all the time. But I think because the sakura, they, they wilt away and disappear so quickly, I mm -hmm. think that's what makes it so unique. Special, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a special thing. And actually, I really love hanami. Mm -hmm. So actually, a couple years ago, I decided I was going to take a plane down mm -hmm. to Kagoshima, mm -hmm. which is at the bottom of Japan. Oh. And I took local trains all the way up to Osaka. Uh -huh. And so every night, I would actually go and to the local park get something to drink and eat and I would just meet new people. Japan, like everyone's so nice, even if you don't know anyone, they really just welcome you and they want to know where you're from, what you're doing here, that kind of thing. But yeah, it's a good memory. So what what about you, Taba? How did you so, feel when you did it? Funny, as I said earlier that we don't have the Hanami festivals uh -huh. So when I first visited my Hanami festival with uh -huh. my friends, uh -huh. I was really surprised by looking at the number of people uh -huh. at that park. Yeah, many there people. So many people. And the thing that I was so surprised was uh -huh. that they were eating, drinking, singing, yeah. dancing, just <laughs> under the tree. Yeah. That was so new to us. Yeah. And we thought that hanami means just looking flower. Mm -hmm. But that's not the thing. Yeah. Hanami means looking flower and enjoying food, dancing and drinking. And get drunk. Yeah, and get drunk. <laughs> So, that was the best part, yeah. and I really enjoyed that. And I okay. say once again, Hanami in Japan is just amazing. I okay. 
So if there's Sakura in your country to, uh, to our audience, uh, please leave a comment. Let us know how do you guys enjoy Sakura during the season in your country, okay? We would like to know. Uh, we got many, many comments saying that we love Sakura. <laughs> we love Japan. Yeah, we do too. <laughs> Yeah, everyone loves Sakura. Yeah. So now we actually want to hear more from you guys. So is there any comments or questions, especially you would like us to answer for you? Please let us know and we'll do our best yeah, to answer we'll them. We'll try our best to answer your questions. Uh, if you have anything guys regarding our garden, regarding Japan, Sakura, please let us know. Yeah, we ha actually have uh, uh, almost 200 people watching. Wow. And we are, yeah, we appreciate that. Um, we have people from Taiwan, from Malaysia, uh, from India, from Nepal, um, from Hong Kong, from uh, the US, uh, from Australia, Brisbane. Yeah, thank you for watching. And uh, we don't really have specific uh, type of questions, but many people are saying that uh, they hope they can come to Japan to yeah. enjoy the sakura, yeah. Hopefully you guys can come, especially with the current situation. We understand that it's very hard right now, mm -hmm. um, especially because many countries, the borders are still not open. Mm -hmm. But that's one of the reasons why we decided that we yeah. wanted to have these type of mm -hmm. live streaming so that you guys could actually still see what it's like here in Japan, especially in our garden during these type of seasons with the sakura trees. And hopefully we can do this again many many more times yeah, yeah. So this is this was our first live but we will hopefully continue doing live every month and show you guys about japan japanese culture mm -hmm. our japanese garden and share many information with you guys so our main goal for this live is to let our foreign community mm -hmm. foreign people mm -hmm. know about japan mm -hmm. and our japanese culture and our garden Hi. so uh would you guys tell a little bit about the next live streaming? Next live event, it's not a decided, but we'll do our live events next month as well. So for the topic, maybe we'll do about our next type of Sakura called Yoshino Sakura. Mm -hmm. And for the date and time, we'll keep updating you guys in our Facebook page. So mm -hmm. please don't forget to follow and like our page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so is there any questions or anything? Uh, everyone's gone. <laughs> Cause, uh, oh no. Oh, uh, there. Are some of pe uh, the people are back in here. We're very sorry yeah, for yeah, the. Yeah. Guys, yeah. So sorry. Yeah. The, we had some technical issues. Yeah. So just once again. So um, our next topic will most likely be, as we said before, we have four types of sakura trees here in Hopwen. So maybe our next one will be about the second type of sakura yeah. tree. Mm -hmm. That's called Yoshino Sakura. Yoshino yeah. Sakura, yeah. And which is the most uh, known one, maybe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully next time, and that'll most likely be around the end of March, maybe. So mm -hmm. hopefully you guys can join us then too. Okay. Yeah, so. So. so if there's nothing, then it's time to close is there anything yeah uh we're we appreciate that you guys are coming back uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, sorry for the instructions and um yeah um we're very uh, happy to deliver this uh live streaming to you guys and uh hopefully uh we'll see you guys next time yeah. really thank you oh, for watching thank you for you backing to day, here guys. yeah until yeah. then Stay safe, stay healthy guys. Yeah. See you in our next live. Okay. Wait, and also don't forget, you should follow our SNS. Yeah, okay. We have our SNS, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. LinkedIn okay. And even YouTube. Yeah. yeah. So follow us and then you'll never miss any information that we have about Hopwin and Japan. Yeah. yeah. And okay. We'll keep updating you guys. Okay, later we're gonna put the link uh, in the comment yeah. place, okay? So, okay, it's so time to say then. goodbye. Yeah. Bye guys. Bye, bye guys, thank you. Stay safe, stay